Hello, it's Thursday again, just before a Easter weekend here. So if you are in Ireland or around anywhere for the next few days, we will be a little quieter because we're going to be taking at least a partial Easter break. I will be around tomorrow, but Monday, Easter Monday is a bank holiday in Ireland, so the shop will be closed. So just to give you warning, if there's anything ordered um, after midday tomorrow, it'll be Tuesday it gets shipped, just so you're not too surprised. But I wanted to tell you about our brand new release today that's hiding over next to me over here. I wanted to keep it as a surprise. I'll swing the camera around a little bit so you can see. But it's, believe it or not, come to the time where we've got our summer knit along. It's still kind of spring, so I'm hesitant to say summer. So I'm finding in my head going on a spring slash summer. Um, mainly because while we're knitting, we're get, it's going on pre-sale now. By the time we start knitting, it's in May and you'll be finishing off during the summer. So you have it to wear in the summer season. Um, Elsa Louise, yarn options for the short row masterclass patterns. I'll come back to that. I'm going to just talk about the knit along first of all. And I will talk a little bit about um, some of the yarn option possibilities for the masterclass classes. Um, but yes, so this summer we're going to have, it's, it's called LASA, L-A FADA S-A. So it is Irish for lace. And let me turn this around here so you can see it. Here we go. This is the LASA knit along pattern. And I'm going to stand behind here so you can actually see it. I feel very small with my tall stand. I brought her up so you'd be able to see it on camera, but now I feel like I'm somehow being dwarfed by, uh, by the mannequin. But you can see it more easily. And this was a really fun one to actually knit because I started with a stitch pattern that I really liked. It was, it's the, this huge oversized lace stitch pattern and it looks really like crochet and I do not crochet, but I do sometimes like the effect of crochet, particularly for lacier and summer, summer patterns and things like that. So I really wanted to play with this because I had done a pattern with this oversized lace several years ago. Um, on a much, much larger scale and a chunky cardigan and it was more or less all over. And I enjoyed it so much that it was something I wanted to come back to uh, in, a different, uh, in a different form. So this is the end result of that. But with it, because it was so, it's such a dramatic lace pattern, I wanted to make sure that um, it kind of, it blended in well with the pattern stitch and it was allowed to shine um, really very much so. It really looks like crochet. I know it looks like crochet, right? But it's just, it's big decreases and increases coming out of it. But it is absolutely, definitely knit because I am not a crocheter. <laughs> just to let you know, like crochet, but I am not a crocheter. So this is, it's all done um, in modular form because anyone who's done things with me before knows that I love my modular knitting. And I had Elsa Louise was asking me there, the yarn, the yarn is indeed new as sport. And this color is sea veggies and i've got i'm down over in this corner of the shop because i've got a wall of newest sport behind me so i'll kind of pull out some of the colors there for you to take a look at as well so you start off with a nice simple garter stitch panel here which is the width of the back of the neck and then from there you're going to go to the front so see here you've got a garter stitch triangle where you start off with the stitches and you work short rows and then you pick up and go from side to side. So this is all worked from the top down. Move over here. So it's picked up along the back and you've got the stitches live in the front and it's worked from the top down. And then it is done in garter stitch. So it's like this is not terribly wide, but if you wanted to create a really dramatic effect, you could actually work a slightly deeper section up here with a wider sleeve and then do more decreases down here to have kind of a fuller lace effect as well, which I think would be gorgeous with this also. So don't be afraid to oversize a little bit with this because with lace and when you're blocking it to open it up, um, oversized actually works pretty well because it's got a floaty open feel to it. So a little extra room is going to make it lighter and really comfortable to wear. So once you've got one side done, you're going to do the very same on the other side. And at the very end, then you're going to pick up all of the stitches from under here and work the body from this point down. 
What I ended up doing with this is that I created um, a series of lace and garter and to a certain extent it was it was actually to give myself a bit of a break from the lace but if you are really into having something all over lace I've given an option where you just leave out the garter and you can work lace all the way down. So if you're in a very very hot climate and you want something even lighter then the option of doing it lace all the way down is there and this is worked straight down with no increases but I've also by putting it in with series of garter and lace like this it gives you the option of doing a line because each of these garter sections you could put um, increases on both sides and because each of um, each of these is a multiple of four so if you actually put in four extra stitches at the start of the garter four at the end then it's going to very easily fold into the next set of um, set of lace stitches when you work down. So that's a big part to me of when you're going ahead and doing a stitch pattern like this. Is there a way of modifying it that you could easily modify it without it being difficult? So by having the, the garter stripes, it allows you to create shaping without having to actually do the shaping within the lace itself. So that's one big benefit of it. But if you want something more open and you want to keep it straight down, then you could do lace all the way down. Elsa Louise, you were popping up there and you were asking about pockets. I suspect that pockets aren't going to work with this because of the fact that you've got the open lace work and it's going to be too heavy and it's going to be visible. So. I don't think pockets are going to work for that unless you did some other modifications and you had something other than the lace underneath. And you were also asking about short sleeves. This would also work great with short sleeves because the sleeves, in order, again, to simplify, I'm all about simplifying it, with the lace pattern in order to not have increases and decreases within the outside of the lace pattern. I've got this worked straight all the way down and then all of the decreases working here. So it would be the same thing if you wanted to make it so it was short sleeved, you could have it here, then have your decreases and then put a garter cuff up along here it would work really well. But the the lace because of the in order to create lace as an open work, you have to block it where you actually open it up because it looks the actual holes, as with most lace, are looking a little closed as you're working it initially. So the blocking opens it up and that also ends up actually opening up the garter stitch a little bit more. Like it's not quite to the same extent as if you're doing a shawl or something like that, but it definitely does open it up a little bit more than typical garter stitch by itself. So this is, I've been dying to actually use this color for a while because this is sea veggies and it was one of the colors we introduced with Newell Worsted when we started that yarn a few years ago. And it was only last year that we added it for the sports weight. And I just, I just love the depth of the green in that. I hope it's coming out on camera. I think, I think it probably is. Like for my screen here, it looks pretty true to the green color. Um, but if you want something, like to me, very spring-like, very green, but I'm gonna have a quick look at some of the other colors back here to give you an idea of if you want something brighter or darker, you can go in either direction really. So if you like darker colors, like if you tend to wear a lot of white dresses, pastel -y ones, you might end up with a darker color like August Storms, which is, it's kind of, it's a gray, a charcoal gray, but there's very, very slight overtones of kind of purpley pink in it. Um, and it depends what lights you look at, what this looks like and what it's, it sits up next to it. I'm always fond of Cafe Flamingo in lace because the last lace cardigan I would have done a couple of years ago for a uh, spring knit along um, spree was done in this the Cafe Flamingo and it looks really really good also if you like a good pop of color and then a few other ones that I think would be great with it here is this is rolling bales I'll move this away because it looks different always when you put other ones rolling bales is this lovely um, kind of hay mustardy color and this is very subtle orangey um, and this is Harvest Moon. So what, oh, oh there's another one I should show you. That I also absolutely love this. This is Hatter's Teal Party, always one of my favorites. But if there's another one of the colors that you want to see back there, just give me a shout and I'll let you see. Um, I'll pop these back up. Well, oh, this figment is also another nice one. This is a purple, but it's a slightly darker purple. 
um, you can kind of see what it looks like up next to this. So each one of these is going to work very well. I would suggest kind of thinking about what you tend to wear because because lace is so open when you have it over something it's going to have a big impact on how it looks underneath so my, with the dark colors I really like the way it works with light uh, underneath so like whites or pastels and things like that darker colors but if it's the other way around like if you tend to wear all grays and blacks and things like that then these brighter colors as a mesh over it is going to give you a really nice bit of contrast so with lace, I always think of contrast because when I wear this over a black top, it looks nice, but it doesn't have quite the same pop as it does over the white. So go for something that is going to contrast with what you're more likely to use to wear it with uh, during the summer. And for once actually as well, see these buttons we have here, we've got some other pearl buttons and we went ahead and got those in stock, believe it or not. So I've got a feeling I may need to order some more so you're able to actually, if you like these buttons, you're able to get some more as well with it. The, if you're looking for buttons for it, what you want, the, it's kind of a, it's a hard enough combination because it's a fairly big button size because of the fact that it is I-cord buttonholes. If you can see those there, they're just, you work I-cord along here and then you skip several of the um, openings here and then you continue on but they tend to make fairly large buttonhole openings so you want a fairly good size button but because of the fact that it's lace and a very light fabric you need something that is very very light so this is a mother of pearl and it's got it's nice and light but it's still got a big enough size so bear that in mind if you're looking for it how many buttons do you need? This one, they're all one, two, three, four, that's six, six buttons is what you need. And all sizes are going to have the same. So if you think you might need to, if you want to extend the, the length of it, then you may add one more. But for the pattern as written, it's going to be six buttons. Um, um, and you were also asking me there a while ago, Else Louise, about the patterns in the short row knits. So the short row knits masterclass is obviously still up in pre-sale. And I've got several patterns inside there. So there's a sock pattern, the tallium, and our Kupsia sock yarn that we have will be perfect for that, will work very, very well. It's nice um, machine washable merino with some nylon in it. For the parcel sweater pattern, it was knit in a DK weight yarn, but it wasn't really a DK. It was a very lightweight DK and knit quite tightly. So I would actually suggest that I think that um, the newest sport is going to work extremely well for the parcel. And I think it'll even give you a nicer uh, fabric than the original one was knit with, which was a little bit heavier and a bit thicker. And I'm trying to remember the third. Oh, and the third pattern was Maynad. Maynad is a shawl where I originally used a variegated yarn with garter stitch going this way and then um, a contrast color along the edge. I think that something like um, Fino or something light and fluffy or even um, possibly Blast a Light if you wanted to go for a more woolly yarn for the main one and you could even stick with the same one along the edge or go for something like Cumulus to have an effect uh, like you had with the featherweight card um, the quilted feather shawl that we've just finished so something like that would be really nice for Maynard I think if you don't want to go for the variegated which I don't have any specifically variegation in stock but Fino probably would be the closest. Um, is there garter all the way or will it be pearl? Um, in this these ones along here are all garter all of these none of the garter stitch are going to have pearl. Um, the lace pattern stitches they're even the wrong set of those are going to be knit as well. The only time you introduce some pearl is the sleeves are knit in the round so the ones in this that were knit are now purled so the sleeves are the only time that you're going to have any pearl uh, the, because in the, the lace pattern as well we're going to have pearl four togethers in it I know don't get freaked out by it it is a big decrease but there's a couple of things that we do in the stitch pattern that make it a bit easier the first one being the knit row before that you go up a needle size and then you drop back down for the purl four togethers and it makes a really big difference because the stitches are a good bit looser and it's much easier to get it in and I would also strongly recommend that you use a super pointy needle for it and it's also why I did end up for the body when you have very long rows 
switching to stripes of garter stitch because it gives you a little bit of a breather it's like having a rest section and then you can come back and the, the stripes of garter are more manageable because up in the body or even the sleeves the rows are much shorter but the body it does get a bit longer so you have to concentrate on those rows when there's a lot of decreases and just make sure everything lines up the way it's it's meant to so but it's uh, as louise yeah sharps is exactly what i used yeah the higher higher sharps are what i used for all of the lace in this and it made a big difference because i at one point was started off with some bamboo or metal ones and then when i switched back i realized that it was it was just too difficult to actually get the pearl four together but once i had the sharps it was a, i won't say a dawdle but it wasn't very difficult it, just, it was it was much more manageable so it makes a big difference um when you're trying to work a particular type of decrease um what sizes if it's size in millimeters it's four and four and a half which i think in u.s sizes are six and seven so most of it is done in the size six u.s six four millimeter and then just the one row before you do the the, um, the large decreases in the lace you jump up one needle size uh, it doesn't it's not i i did it with both because when i was starting i wasn't doing the larger needle size um, and it didn't seem to have a huge impact on the gauge that one row but it was much much easier to work so if you don't find any difference don't worry about dropping out the other needle size if you think it's too much to mess with then yeah it doesn't it doesn't cause problem um, it's it still works just as well it's purely for your convenience so that it's a little bit easier to actually work through um, but if you've got any more questions on it just fire them away it's also actually a good way of practicing those little short rows because these front sections here with the small garter stitch triangles there it's it's almost like a swatch <laughs> for a short row class um because of the fact that it's just this little teeny tiny short row, uh, triangle and all you're doing is doing short rows and um, so it's a really really good example of how you can create an actual shape using short rows and because the lace is what takes the focus on this i've kept everything else to a bare minimum that there's no there's no increases and decreases or anything so you'll be picking up stitches working the lace and just have this little section of short rows and the only other decrease would be just before you reach the cuff so the focus is really on the lace and focusing on that and getting that right uh, as louise you're asking german i assume you're talking about the short rows yes it was german short rows anytime i'm doing garter stitch assuming it's not really loose garter stitch i'm almost always going to use german short rows because it just it's so tidy it gives you a good results at both times oh and you're asking about the sweater i'm wearing this is an oldie but a goodie this is a free one from knitty magazine called iced that is i suspect it's like 10 12 years ago it's quite a while um and it's a, a yarn that I think is now, uh, the reason it's called Iced is the yarn is actually called Ice. And it was an old yarn from Drops and it was a cotton acrylic blend, super chunky. So it's, it's a good, it's one of those ones that it seems to just wear forever because it's cotton and acrylic, but it's also, it's light, it's not too heavy. I don't know if there's any yarns like that out there if you wanted a warmer version it would work really well in chunky wool as well um, but that's obviously not going to be so good for an in-between seasons one because it will be very warm but i do it's um you got again a lovely big garter short row collar which i actually love because if i'm cold usually my neck's cold so um something with the collar if i'm just going to throw it over my shoulders is really really helpful I'm looking through I don't think I've missed any other questions there if I missed any questions as we're going through just give me a wave there and pop the comment up again but I don't think I did um, um so yeah all of them are all up on the website again um so you find it under Lossa pattern and then the Lossa yarn kit as always the two of them are sold separately because of the fact that if you want to go and get the pattern and Ravelry that gives you the option of doing that or if you are knitting a second one for someone else, you can get two yarn kits and then just add the pattern once. But on the pattern, you can, I mean, on the yarn kit page, you can add in the yarn kit and then you've got the option to add the pattern in. And I've also this time added the button option down there so you can add some buttons in as well if you want. So they're all down there and they can be added in as you, um, as you go through on the page. 
also on the website if you purchase it as for you as I've done before um, there'll be a workshop the workshop right now just has a brief introduction but when you buy the pattern on my website you'll be auto enrolled into the workshop because I know the last time I had it where there was a coupon from the work from my website and it was causing some difficulties for people so this time I've set it up so that it's auto enrolled into the teachable workshop and there's going to be um, new videos every single week as I go along. So all the tips I've been talking about here, I'm going to work through and we'll be showing you as we're going through the patterns um, for each stage of the clues. If you prefer to get it on Ravelry, the pattern is up there. Obviously, you won't be auto enrolled in that, but there will be a coupon on Ravelry so that you're able to add yourself into the workshop. So you can still get the workshop. It's just not going to be an automatic process. That's all. The, the chat is always going to be on Nithub as before. Uh, it's a very convenient spot because it's linked in with Teachable. So you can, you can log in and you're able to jump from one to another and it'll kind of all be up there where you can get started. So I think most, oh, the only thing I forgot to tell you is on my website, if you put the pattern and the yarn kit in together until the end of April, there's an automatic 10% discount on both together. So that's only going to be till the end of April. So if you are, if you want to jump in, go get it sooner rather than later. Um, I'll see you over the next few weeks and you could pop up any questions you have if you've been swatching and you're having, you're running into any problems or you are curious about gauge or blocking or any of that good stuff. So, bye. <music>